Hello and welcome to Lakewood Ranch CERT. This is the last video from our member skills refresher session. And in this one, we'll be looking and talking about the materials that were updated and issued by CERT at the beginning of 2020. We'll be talking about Lakewood Ranch CERT readiness, radios and activation, and talking about doing so under the COVID-19 situation we have currently. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to spend a few minutes to take us through a number of areas. First being the materials. We've been using a format today. I, we did send some information out quite a long time ago um, in terms of how we try and structure uh, our training materials. So when you look through this uh, in future, uh, some things here to be aware of. Number one, in all of the training materials, we're trying to be very clear about what the objectives of each of these uh, units uh, are in terms of what they're covering. Let me do that at the beginning of the presentations. I mentioned we're putting quiz clues in so that as you go through materials, you may see this red star as a big, big hint in terms of an answer to one of the questions. But then also just in terms of the structure here on the various slides, and we use this, you will have seen today without necessarily registering it, that we kind of indicate which, which unit the um, uh, the slide actually fits into. But then on the right hand side, there's information about how does this relate back to the FEMA documentation <clears throat> as well, which is an important um, way of connecting the slides with the information that's actually in the participant manual. So just to let you know, there is some structure to how we have these arranged. Um, some of the slides like activation principles are very Lakewood Ranch specific and we kind of indicate at the bottom right here you know where you'd find that information in the standard operating procedures so again linking back to what I had mentioned earlier about the operating procedures being a, a very important document for us in Lakewood Ranch. So that's just a little refresher on that one. <clears throat> uh, we have these important things. Okay. Now let's talk about radios and readiness conditions, or in fact, let's talk about readiness conditions first. And um, Jim covered some of this material in the uh, the recent meeting, so I'm not going to go to it, uh, go through it again in detail. Uh, what I am going to do is is just make sure that you are familiar with each of these. These colours are the same colours that will appear at the top of the screen on the website. So you will see them. And th this is kind of what you what they're telling you in terms of where we are with what's happening from a weather situation. Um, and so that you're aware, should you not be, should you've not already um, been made aware of this. But then, as I mentioned before, when you actually go out to the website and you click on one of these conditions, you get a whole, and I'm sure you can't probably read that terribly well, which is why you kind of need to do it in person, but you get a whole set of actions that are related to what you need to be uh, looking at. You know, whether you're uh, a team captain, a group leader, or whether you're a team member, these are the various actions. So again, in terms of, you know, refreshing your memories about what type of things you should be thinking about, both as a certain member, but also just as a general member of population, right, with that critical decision that you and your family need to make in terms of stay or go, um, it's very important that you uh, make yourself aware of this. So it's a good way of, thinking uh, about the actions that you need to take in advance of situations occurring. And these days with weather forecasting being what it is and the tendency to be very cautious about events, there's plenty of time to look at this information out on the web. Uh, and again, we have a YouTube video about readiness conditions that covers some more of this. Please refer. Radios. <clears throat> again, I'll plug my uh, YouTube videos that are out there. Um, gonna just briefly talk about the instant command radio because we, we, don't, uh, we don't go through this in the basic training course in terms of um, uh, these particular radios and how they operate. And I myself wasn't familiar with them particularly until recently. So it has a, a standard set, that, but, but actually what, I, what I've discovered for myself is that these radios are less complicated uh, than the team member radio. So essentially there's an on off button and there's a channel select button. <clears throat> and those are the critical things. And the channel selector even talks to you so you know which channel you, you've connected to. Each team has a particular channel 
that they used to connect to their hub and um, and those in that information is provided into the team captains and the team leaders um, and uh, is available on, of course out in our standard operating procedures uh, the one a cu couple of critical things <clears throat> on this radio number one do not turn it on without the antenna being connected uh, there is a possible these are high powered radios and uh, there's been some experience that shows that if you do that, there's a good chance that you can fry the, uh, the innards of the radio and they're, they're, they're rendered useless. So um, should you be in a situation where you're not super familiar with them, uh, please make sure that you put the antenna on before you start trying to turn it on and connect to anybody. It's a critical thing. Uh, the other, other uh, important point, again, mentioned in the video is generally these radios come with a couple of aerials the longest aerial gives you the longest range, uh, stands kind of to reason. So that's the one that you want to use. Uh, and again, hold it in an upright position for maximum range. <clears throat> these radios will go right across Lakewood Raj. So wherever you are in Lakewood Raj, and if you've got one of these radios, you will connect um, uh, with your hub. You will connect uh, with other other folks that are on the same channel uh, if they should be uh, from an instant command perspective so these are very powerful radios um, and uh, and i think i tested this with pat and we covered a range of, of some two to three miles uh, with no trouble at all any questions specific to the instant command radio Okay, team member radio. <clears throat> right. I have a question, excuse me, yes. about the incident commander radio. They, uh, they are in the team kit with our team captains and issued when we are in a certain level of readiness? No, the, the team captain has the generally has the instant command radio with them along with their member backpack that's so generally the team captain's got it which is uh, actually reminds me of another good point which is when the team captain goes on vacation which of course is a rare thing just at the moment that they need to make sure that they pass that radio to another one of their team members so generally these radios are held so a team captain will have both a member radio and an instant command radio um, does the team leader have an incident command radio? Yes, sorry, team leader. Team, we use team captain kind of in our non-activated state and team leader in the activated state. Group leader. Sorry, group leader. <laughs> Even group guess. leader, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, pardon. Thank you. Good, Chris. Good question. Any, any other questions? <clears throat> so team member radio, again, the uh, in terms of setting it up and how to use it, uh, that's covered. It's more, it's, as I say, it's more complicated actually than the instant command uh, radio is. <clears throat> and it has a lot of features and we talk about some of those uh, and particularly useful can be the, the NOAA weather information where you can get to the weather information at any particular stage. Um, and uh, so again, the setup of this, I'm not going to go through because it's it's main, it's covered in the, in the video. Uh, but just a couple of things. We've got channels 15 to 21 available to us, please. So please make sure that you stay within those channels. But if for some reason you start moving channels, and we'll, I'll talk about that a little bit on the next slide. Um, but when it comes to using radio, it's very important that you relay the most important information first, right? So in terms of radio etiquette, if you'd like, let's get to the point. Let's get to the nitty gritty of why are you, on, why are you using the, the radio band? What is it you need to communicate into your um, group leader. <clears throat> when you do that, try and think about what you're going to say before you say it and, and keep the transmission concise and short and uh, informative and speak slowly and clearly. Um, it, you know, you're going to be pumped with adrenaline in all likelihood and, and tending to speak fast, but think about how to speak slowly, given that you're over a radio, it may not be super clear, given the reception as well. <clears throat> Back to hold the radio upright. Uh, again, that in, improves the transmission capability of the radio and the range of the radio. And then keep the transmit button pressed for one second, beep, 
because if you don't, you can cut off what you're saying and they may miss that final couple of words that come out of your mouth. So try and think about, you know, doing a one count before you release the push the talk button um, after you've finished speaking, just to make sure that everything goes through and goes through appropriately. Finish with over. And finish with over. And, and again, finish with over, and in fact, a whole lot of other information around using the radios and how to communicate effectively is another plug for the standard operating procedure. There's some great information that, um, that David and the radio teams have put into that document around how to uh, effectively communicate. <clears throat> um, so when you're using the radio, and I, I don't know, again, in exercises that folks have participated in, um, if you're at the, on the receiving end of this and you're the group leader at that particular time in the exercise, so consider, consider the group leader who's sitting there, not only with a team member radio that you're trying to talk to them on, but they also have the instant command radio. They could be talking to the hub on or the hub could choose to talk to them on, uh, as well as which they're somehow going to be writing this information down. So there's a lot happening for that group leader. And this is an excellent opportunity when some volunteer walks up and says, can I help? It's like, yeah, well, monitor this or help me with that or write that down um, is, is one of the things. But a little bit of patience actually all around, whether you're a group leader or you're a team member in terms of using the radios uh, is, is, is a good thing to have, which leads us back to the relay that most important information first in a concise message and clearly. Next slide is an eye test, <clears throat> but it's an important eye test. So during the course of this year, we have changed and updated all of the channels and privacy codes for each of the teams. Uh, and the reason for doing that is we have an ability to, to get better range and coverage out of the team member radios. So. I don't expect you necessarily to obviously memorize this chart. And this information um, should be known to you for your particular team and should be uh, kept with your radio. Uh, as Pat is one to tell you, keeps telling me, please remind people. And if you, other members on your team as well, if they're not attending this particular session, please ask people you know, if they've got the old information about their channel and privacy codes taped to the back of their radios, which is not a bad thing to do. Please make sure that they've got the current information or please make sure that you have the current information. Um, but once again, when we get into activation, um, you will receive information on email texts that will include the radio channel and privacy codes that you should be using for your particular team. However, um, since they have changed this year, there's been a lot of updating going on. And this is the current set. The current set are out on the website, of course, and um, please go there and take a look at it. <clears throat> Questions on the team member radio. Okay. Last thing. Just one again. I mean, I think Pat covered um, activating under COVID, uh, and and Jim again has stressed this in, in previous meetings, but. First thing is an old thing, which is activate when it's safe. When you and your family are safe and secure, that's when you activate. PPE, personal protective equipment, uh, very, very important. Uh, it was important and very, very important before, but it's got additional emphasis, as you well understand, uh, at this particular time. Social distance at the assembly area. Um, and an addition was made into the team kits. So there are increased numbers of surgical type masks and there are face shields. So the face shields either are going to be with the team captain at this time or, or they're going to be in the team captains in the, in the kit. It, it kind of depends where people are storing things. So, for example, in my team, our team kits are stored in a pool area. <clears throat> It gets very hot in there. That's not the best thing for these particular face shields. So they are actually with the team captain. But they, these face shields uh, are, are obviously easier to deal with if you've, if you've got some available than having face masks given our particular climate. So we've started to make those available and, and probably look at uh, in, increasing the numbers over time as well. And remember, encounter others as if they've got COVID and others will probably treat you as if you've got COVID in the current circumstances. So um, 
but the key thing is wear the PPE regardless. It's, uh, it's very important for your own safety and health. <clears throat> so uh, final wrap up here. Any, any additional questions that, that Pat or myself could help with? There was a comment again about uh, tourniquets. Um, Kim points out that a lot of injuries that you'll find after disaster are results of chainsaws. <laughs> so, you know, there might be an incident where you come upon an arterial bleed. Yes, yes, it's not necessarily the immediate cleanup. It could be something that happens subsequent to it as well. You're right. You know, one of the things to remember is that after Irma, <clears throat> there were 17 deaths reported. And nobody died during the storm. Nobody died by flooding. People died in the cleanup, falling off roof, chainsaw injuries, and so on. So one of the things, just to repeat, in bandaging and splinting, we want to have a distal pulse, a downstream pulse. In tourniquet, we do not want to have a downstream or distal pulse. So bandaging and tourniquets, we want a pulse. Tourniquets, we don't want a pulse. All right. Thanks, so um, an observation or an analogy, perhaps, before we, we close out, which is, which is, I'm thinking about this, I've got chocolate cake on my brain for various reasons, which I won't go into. And this training session, to me, could be is analogous to chocolate cake, believe it or not, because I can show you pictures of chocolate cake and I can write to you about chocolate cake, but it's not the same as actually eating the chocolate cake. So today we weren't able to give you an opportunity to actually practice some of the things that we talked about. Uh, but we are looking forward next year to being able to do that because it's really hands on experience that, that really cements the training and the education. So as I say, unfortunately, we can't do that just at the moment, but we are looking forward to being able to do it. However, that said, there are still things that you can do. You can pull out your backpack. You can have a look at your radio. You could talk to one or two of the members of your team and try some things out. Uh, at, an, at an appropriate distance. So uh, so please think about that and I shall shortly be enjoying some chocolate cake. So homework, uh, website, password is member. <laughs> Hopefully that we, we've got everybody familiar and updated with that. Uh, take a look at the YouTube channel uh, and if you've got suggestions, uh, please feel free to, to send them to me. I work with others to try and get the videos out there as we are able to produce them. Um, and, uh, and we'll do our best, but uh, any ideas, please feel free to send them in. So we've covered quite a lot of material today <clears throat> and, uh, and Karen, the communications team, will be sending out an email when I've completed it uh, with some of this information we've covered both directly and some links to make it easy for you to navigate and find information. And, uh, and on behalf of, of all of the, the members of the Lakewood Raj Board, um, I'd like to thank you for attending today. It's very important that we keep ourselves up to date and refreshed, and I hope that this has been informative for you. Any final questions or any other questions um, you want to write into email, you can do that to, to, to certainly. Sorry, any, any question? Is that a question? Now, Nigel, there was a question about uh, new membership. Do you have any update about that or should that be an email question? Um, we have, uh, I can, I'll try and do my best to update, uh, provide you with an update. Y yes, we have uh, 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 quite a number of folks that have signed up uh, for training. Um, however, we cannot conduct the training at this particular time. We were unable to do in-person training. Uh, the board considers every month when do we think we can be ready to do in-person training and us being ready also involves the folks at town hall and also involves very critically the folks the uh, manatee fire and rescue um, uh, at the fire station where we do the final day so um, we've got people and they're very eager to get trained however we're not able to take them through the training at this particular uh, point in time as soon as we feel comfortable and we can line up everything with the other resources that we need to participate, uh, we absolutely will be starting training again. Thank you. Thank Any you, Nigel. 
All right. Well, I think we might have run over by a minute or two. Uh, but again, thank you very much for sharing your Saturday morning. And uh, we will, uh, as I said, make, I think we have recorded this whole uh, meeting. So we will probably cut the pieces of it up and put it out onto the YouTube channel and uh, allow you to be able to use that as another resource. So thank you all very much again for attending today.